Hi there, I hope you are doing well. Just when we thought that DF64 was done with their latest grinder, the DF83V, which we've reviewed recently, a new grinder came out of nowhere, the DF54. 54 stands for 54 millimeter flat burrs. This is by far their cheapest grinder available on the market. It checks so many boxes and spoiler alert, it might be our favorite budget friendly grinder on the market. Let me start. First of all, gonna start from the bottom. This tiny beast has a 150 watt motor and uh, it is really strong. I went Turkish ground coffee, really fine powder, light roast, no issues at all. I even went like 300 gram of coffee beans, consistent, zero latency, zero difficulty in grinding it. It has a small metal switch on off switch similar to the one that's available in varia vs3 but it's slightly larger the motor itself it's uh, relatively quiet again i keep saying relatively quiet but because it is relatively quiet let me show you i'm gonna lift it in the air to avoid any vibration on the table and you can hear it but yeah on the table it's not that much quiet yeah but it's good. Now to demonstrate the power of the motor, how it sounds while grinding coffee beans. As I said, I usually was getting espresso between 10 and 13, 10 and 14 marks. However, I'm gonna push it to number six, which is really fine and show you how it goes. I have here washed light roasted coffee beans. I always tend to use washed and light roasted coffee beans because in general, they tend to be really dense with high altitudes. So yeah. I'm gonna try this here. Now here you're gonna see the motor capabilities and how fluffy the ground coffee is. I'm gonna hold it in space and start grinding. Yep, that's it, it's done. And you can see the retention right now. I'm gonna give two puffs. Almost nothing came out. It's that good, the retention in it. I would say really impressive. You can see here how much fine it is. Moving up to the dozing cup fork, they've introduced with this one, a very nice touch that is a silicone insert basically with the previous df64 models even the previous versions many people were customizing the dozing cup fork and a 3d printing and instead of having the dozing cup sitting flat it will allow you to tilt it slightly closer to the grinding shout to avoid any ground coffee particles flying everywhere with this one they've included this small silicone insert you've inserted in place here in the dozing cup fork you hold the dozing cup you put it in place, super simple and a perfect angle. Moving up from the dozing cup to the grinding shout, this grinder surprisingly, it also has the plasma generator. And with the plasma generator and the tilted dozing cup, I never used RDT, I've been testing for the past few days. I rarely had to wipe coffee away from it because usually when you use grinder for so many, like let's say two kilograms of grinding coffee beans, you do get some ground coffee around the grinder. But with this one, it always find its way into the dozing cup. An additional new feature they've introduced with this grinder is the grinding dial. It was very tough to find the grinding dial to read with the previous DF64 models. However, I think with version five of the first gen DF64, they've introduced a grinding collar, indicating collar that sits here and you lock it with your finger or with a small screw. It stays in place that way. However, that one was not very practical because whenever you wanted to take off to access the grinding chamber, you had to loosen it, take it up, and uh, it felt a bit gimmicky, if you may. But with this new addition, it's a smart one, and it saved you the trouble of memorizing for alignment. I'll explain it shortly. And it's on the sweet spot, like you can even go coarser, remove the grinding shaper without hitting it. Coming to the top, even with this price tag, that's really cheap price tag, they were able to manage to put wooden lead. It's a cheap wood, but uh, it gives it an elegant touch. I would say maybe use some wood oil on it. It might look much better. The silicone 
this anti-popcorn lead and the grinding chamber all of it it's all accurately cnc machined i'm gonna go coarser right now keep going coarser right now it's open and we access the grinding chamber and when you access the grinding chamber you can really appreciate the machining that goes in it it feels super well machined and you can see the 54 millimeter burrs here what i was going to speak about alignment in previous models of df64 basically you have three hooks that sits in place for the upper burr carrier and sometimes in alignment before checking for the burrs alignment with the marker test you need to find the best position of them because it can be either one of three so i used always to test which one was the better or the best fit of course they are factory aligned but in case if you open it you forget which position it was right now as you have the indicator here you're always gonna put it this way like you're not gonna put it on the left and having the indicator going to the back this grinder came as is very well aligned with the marker test and it was even with better alignment than the df64 gen 2 i remember the df64 gen 2 was very well aligned but not to the point that this one is this one almost all the corners were evenly wiped so the alignment here is really good and even because you are dealing with a smaller flat burr achieving that good alignment is easier because the larger you go with the burrs you'll have more fluctuations just simply put it's really well aligned as we are closing the grinding color this brings me to a very important point which is the micro adjustment it has a stepless grind adjustment mechanism basically there are no clicks it's an infinite you can go right to the point that burrs are touching and go coarser it can give you a difference in espresso extraction as accurate as somewhere between two to five seconds that is really good like we consider this kind of the standards and a great grinder for espresso so it can easily achieve your perfectly dialed espresso shot and shifting between espresso and filter again it's super smooth right now we are at zero and i found espresso to be around the 12 so we're going to 12 so imagine with me right now you are at espresso and you want filter you instantly go 35 it's filter back to 12 espresso so it's that easy that fast going between filter and espresso also the retention as you have smaller grinding chamber with a plasma generator and that good machining uh, without even using rdt basically spraying the coffee beans we had an experiment we opened the grinder clean the grinding chamber to start from like zero retention to check how much even retained coffee inside the grinding chamber and in general the average was 0.1 gram retention to 0.2 that is really good and sometimes it's zero like 0.0, .0 somewhere so i would say the retention is impressive inside of it now to the last point taste wise generally speaking people avoid smaller burrs than 64 millimeter burrs because they tend not to be that much good in espresso i got spoiled by ssp burrs because i've been testing them the last few days with a new grinder review of it coming soon but coming from 64 millimeter flat burrs by ssp to this grinder i was able to see the difference like 64 millimeter ssp burrs regardless of lab sweet or multi-purpose they give you that flavor separation with lab sweet you get extra sweetness you appreciate the body with multi-purpose you get that bright tasting notes easy to clean espresso shot light body here you do feel that a hint of astringency in espresso extraction and you feel that tasting notes are mixed up but at the same time you're not losing that much like espresso shots were enjoyable to drinks i really enjoyed drinking them and when i went to filter i was expecting i was not expecting to get what i got basically surprisingly the filter paper after finishing the v60 extraction it looked kind of clean relatively clean you have that amount of fines but it's not to the point that it's jamming the, the filter paper i end up with a brewing time between two and a half minutes which is ideal my main idea is that again we always take price tag into consideration and as this grinder is only for 230 us dollars <sighs> I know it might sound strange and please if you can't think of negative points or if you get this grinder let me know because as of this this moment right now is making the video and for testing it for the past week i cannot think of a single negative point it's that good considering the price tag i think the only two things i would wish to see 
is SSP burrs. I don't know if SSP is willing to make 54 millimeter burrs, but I'm genuinely interested in seeing multi-purpose burrs by SSP as 54 millimeter to install this grinder. If SSP burrs produce 54 millimeter burrs, when you swap the burrs, your point zero might change. Instead of zero on the grinding color, it might look number 10 where the burrs will be touching. So there's no way to reset, recalibrate your point zero. They found a fix for it in the DF64V where the grinding color, you untighten it and you reset it at the setting you want. Here, we have to see what they might come off. But for now, as is, those are the only two points that I can think of, wish to see improve for this grinder at this price range. I'm really pleased with this grinder. I can easily recommend it to anyone who's starting their coffee journey and looking into getting electric grinder. We did make a video in the past about the best electric grinders under 350 US dollars. And the winners of that video were the Varia VS3 grinder as a super versatile grinder, espresso and filter, minimalistic small design, and the fellow old four filter coffee only. However, with this one, it would have definitely made it to the list in that video. And I would say, at this price range, if someone comes up to us and asks us, I only have $200, what is the best electric grinder I can get? This is definitely the best option, period. That's it, the F54. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I really look forward to hearing your thoughts. Please, if any one of you ever get this grinder, let us know. We do have a discount code you can feel free to benefit from. And thanks to me, Coffee, for sending us this review unit. Take care and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye.